Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or wherever you are, whoever you are, whatever the time may be, welcome back to another Leagues video. And this time I don't have any big announcements to cover. They have been very close chest with everything so far. We haven't had like any actual official announcements since the announcements that Leagues was coming itself. But we have had some little tidbits here and there behind the scenes. Primarily, all of this information was taken from JMods in the uh, League's Discord server, which I'll try and remember to leave a link to in the description of the video. Anyone can join it. I'm only in there so I can get all the news and bring it back to you guys, really. I have most of the channels in there muted, except the ones that JMods post in. Anyway, here today, I'm just going to be going over a few different bits here and there that have been confirmed about this coming Leagues, and hopefully soon we'll get some more info. I've already got a huge PowerPoint planned ready to go for area picking as soon as we get told about the Echo bosses. Just waiting for info to come out. But now here is what we have been told. And this is all confirmed, not announced, but confirmed by Jagex themselves. So raid updates, all of the mega rares will be obtainable from all of the raids. If you haven't previously seen that, I just thought it was worth including. And they're still intended to be the best in slot gear above echo gear. Drops that come from echo bosses are meant to be sort of just below the mega rare power level. So the mega rare would still be best in slot, but the echo bosses are a good alternative perhaps if you don't have one or more of the mega rares. Also notable is that the scythe will be able to be charged anywhere with just blood runes, not its usual cost. I was wondering about that because I thought what's the point in getting a scythe if you don't have Mauritania you can't go to the fountain that you have to use and get the blood vials that you can only get from Mauritania like how are you gonna charge it but yeah apparently it's only blood runes glad they address that. Also notable in raids is that if you're raiding in a team this time around everybody in the raid will get a purple at the same time rather than just one person getting it like it was in previous leagues. I don't personally do a lot of team content but apparently this was an issue in the previous leagues that people encountered when they were in groups that if one person got a purple it just meant everybody else didn't. That's not going to be a problem anymore. Everybody is getting their own purples and they're all going to be rolled separately so you, you're not going to see eight shadows at once. Very unlikely anyway but it could happen theoretically and it seems there'll be a point cap for TOA that's back again, so we'll cap around 55%, but that should be 55% for everybody, not just for a single person, and then deleting everybody's chances altogether. So, some nice things for group raids in particular, and for those who are looking to be playing at the higher level. This does only count for 500 plus invocations and hard mode top, but yeah, some nice updates there. Moving on, the Desert Treasure 2 bosses are now going to be available available to anybody with the respective regions to fight without having to pick desert and complete Desert Treasure 2. So you can fight Vardovis in Valamor, he's been moved from Corrent to give Valamor a bit more content, and he's technically also in Valamor I guess. Duke is found in his regular home in the Fremenic province, in the Gorok dungeon, and the Whisper is found under Ice Mountain, in the Lassar Undercity, in Asgarnia. And Duke, Vardovis, and the Whisper can all be accessed without the desert as well, which is a huge upgrade from the last leaks. There's not a great deal of drops that come from these guys aside from Virtus Robes, Soul Reaper Axe pieces, and then you have the Vestiges which without the Fremenic region are kind of useless, but with the Fremenic region you get access to some nice extra ring upgrades there. Even just with Duke for example you would have access to the Seer's ring upgrade from his Vestige if you manage to get your hands on that. So yeah, this is definitely a huge update. The Leviathan Dust only Desert, of course, because you get to it through the desert, through Guardians of the Rift. But the other three can now all be accessed without desert, which is pretty cool, because it means for me, personally, I'm not planning on picking desert this year. I did last year, and I do think it detracts from the desert a little bit, but I'm probably going to pick Valamor. I mean, I'm definitely going to pick Valamor this year. It's the only region I'm 100% sure on so far. So I'll get to fight Vardovis which uh, I've done a great deal of before, but it's leaked, so I'm sure I'll do it plenty. Yeah, definitely a nice upgrade to take into account when it comes to picking your regions. Further on that note, we have some updates to the auto-completed quests 
we've been given full lists for everything and I will have those lists in their entirety when it comes to my region picking guide that I mentioned earlier. For now, the ones that have been added that you need to know about is that Dwarf Cannon now auto-popped in Asgarnia. That means you get a multi-cannon as soon as you have the money to buy it in Asgarnia. You don't need to get Candor in two. In previous years, you needed both regions to be able to get it, just one wasn't enough. Now, Asgarnia is enough. It doesn't matter whether you have Candor in or not. Taste of Hope is also auto-popped in Mauritania now, which is up from the previous Darkness of Hallowvale. Gives you some more access to that side of the map with the whole city. Don't think it gives you the full access to like the Hallowed Sepulchre and everything, but you can get to Theatre of Blood by that point. You're basically one quest away from completing it. And likewise, up from just X marks the spot in the previous league, we now have all of the core and quest line completed up to Kingdom Divided, which is absolutely fantastic. You can use those thralls as soon as you unlock core and you just have to get yourself onto the Arcade Spellbook first, but you'll have all of the spells already unlocked and you'll be able to claim that Book of the Dead from Commander Fuller, I assume, unless it comes from the Surge, but I assume it would come from Commander Fuller, where you would usually reclaim it in Corrin Castle. So that's a nice one to be added for the Zaya lovers. I may be taking Corrin, so... Yeah, nice one to be aware of. Death to the Dog should now auto popped at the start of the game in Mistelin, which means you can have that bone crossbow as soon as you log in if you want. Could be nice for some range builds early on. Also, just nice to have. It basically would require Asgarnia otherwise to get to Goblin Village. So I get why they've done this and I do approve of it. It's something I did in my own region locked adventure, the Wild West is just unlocked that goblin village portion so that I could do this. So it's a good change. Likewise, Romeo and Juliet and Soulsbane are both also all popping in Mistelin. Less notable because they don't really give anything, but it gets away a couple of those annoying things that you can't be bothered to do or really deal with. So it's nice to have them on the list. Moving on, we have a couple of special cases here within regions. First up on the shop front, Blood Talisman will be available from the Canopy's General Store. That means anyone with Mauritania can use the True Blood Altar without you needing to go to Guardians of the Rift for a Blood Talisman or I don't know where else you get one. However else you get one, you don't need to. You can buy one in Canopy's General Store. And sort of similar, like the Hunter's Crossbow that usually comes from the Yanil Hunter's shop will be available from a Char ships on Sunset Coast, which is really nice for those Valamore accounts. They don't have to pick Kandarin in order to get the Hunter's Sunlight Bow, which is something I'm personally going for at the minute on Woody Wild, and it is a very nice item indeed. It's better than an RCB apparently. I didn't find this out until yesterday, but big stuff. Good to be able to have that. The Wilderness Agility Course is free to use. No 150k to enter, and your lap counter doesn't reset when you die. Couple that with the fact that PvP kills count as PvM kills in leagues, so like, no one can PK you and take your stuff. It just counts as a PvM death, you get to go claim it from death. There's like, zero reason to PK other than for spite, or if you're trying to make weird content that I don't know why anyone would watch, because leagues isn't about that. Anyway, the course is free, you can stack up your lap count. I don't know if this means you can just leave and the lap count doesn't reset, because if that's the case, then you could like, if not, then you could just like get a skeleton to kill you, die, and then whenever you go back to it, you still have a ridiculous high lap count. Like, is it just going to stay for the entire league, whatever your lap count is, will never reset? I don't know. They haven't announced the full details, but at least when you die, it doesn't reset, so... That's something, and yeah, free to use. So you can get that streak up nice and high, get plenty of rewards, alcohols, supplies from that chest. Friminic will automatically be able to make super anti-fire potions. Usually you'd require Kandarin for the myth skills as well in order to get the recipe, but you get it automatically with Friminic this time around. And the third certificate from the dig site can be claimed straight away on day one, which means that people who have Friminic or Valamore can now start RFD thanks to the Greenman's Ale available in those regions with the certificate traded in for a fruit blast without needing Kandarin or Mauritania who both have the start auto completed. And then finally just a few little notes here and there. Many of the long grindy tasks like monkey agility laps and chompy birds have been removed this time around 
It means you can safely pick Canberra and without having to worry about those, I'm sure other similar ridiculously high KC tasks have been removed. So those are just a couple of examples that were given. Shops will have infinite stock as in the previous leagues and there was a mention of sometimes having the ability to buy noted items, which suggests that Fire Sale will likely return in a similar form, if not the exact same. It was a great relic last time. I'm going to be hard pressed not to pick it again as much as I want to change things up. I, if it's Fire Sale versus Bankers Note again, I think I'm still on Team Fire Sale, y'all. Fire Sale is just so fucking good. Anyway, likely to come back. Implin spawn rates and the rate at which rare implin spawn both been increased. I think this just sort of goes in line with the whole like unique rates increases. We don't want to see young implants wandering around Gilanor. Do you know what I mean? We want to see some lucky implants so we can tick off those hard to get 200 point task for catching a lucky implant because there's actually some around rather than encountering one in your entire leagues and it's before you have the hunter level to get it. I, I did actually get that last time towards the end of the league but that's besides the point. Not everybody did. That should help with those sorts of tasks this time around. And a little bit of a note on combat but still haven't got a great deal of information. We know that the decisions you make regarding your combat masteries will be permanent and locked in. Once you choose something, that is what you've chosen at that tier or level or whatever, you can't change it. And in parallel to that, only one tier of the relics will be focused on combat this time around. This is probably going to be like the fourth tier from the previous leagues where you could choose to have sped up and buffed ranged melee or mage respectively. It'll probably have some number changes and differences from last time around for balancing purposes. Maybe not make crossbow so OP this time because the enchanted bolts last leagues were ridiculous. Uh, Rune crossbow beat like everything, <laughs> which is weird, but it was just the best weapon. So yeah, there's only one tier relics focused on combat this time around. The rest of it is going to be coming from combat masteries. I'm really excited to learn more about that. I will of course have videos out about it whenever we get more info. But for now, that is all we have, folks. That is all we've been given. I'm afraid it's all I can report. But I'm super hyped to get some more info. Like I say, I already have this area picking guide with 34 slides. That's an intro and three for each different region. I'm just waiting to fill in these echo boss sections so I can fully get this guide out to y'all. will be a long one, so definitely keep an eye out for that if it's something you want to help with. Other than that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. More videos on the way. As soon as we get the info, I'm widowed. Love you all. Look after yourselves. Be lovely to one another. I'll see you on the next one.